Agile Safety Cases. Today, as part of our compliance series, we will explore this topic a little further, leveraging an automotive example. I'm Sheila Schultz, and I'm here with my colleague, Peter Pedros from Pedco AG. Hi, Peter. Hi, Sheila. It's a pleasure talking to you. Yes, it's exciting to talk to you as well today. Well, Peter, the Scaled Agile Framework, SAFE model, fosters building a solution incrementally. I wondered if you could expand on this concept, including talking a little bit about solution intent. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, the, the bigger topic is talking about how you can document the solution and build it in an incremental way. You know, and if we're talking about usually waterfall issue processes, we have a lot of documents and we start with requirements, then we have design documents, then we start coding, then we do verification. And at the end, we do our audit or audit report. So we have a certified solution. And in an incremental development, we are doing this all the time, but on very many iterations. So it must be all complete from the first iteration on. So we have it documented, coded, tested, and validated at the same time. And if you look at that from a picture wise, it's just that we have a small kernel of a solution and it just grows with every iteration and it gets bigger and bigger. But each one of these iterations you could use and deploy to the customers. So that is the, the idea behind that. And there is a specific construct in the Scaled Agile framework, which is called the solution intent. And the solution intent is a, like a container. It's something that describes what the, the system does currently right now and what the changes are intended for a future states. So it includes current specifications, design, tests, codes, but also the future specification, future design, future test code, and this should all be traceable, and that what makes up at the end the solution. That is a very beautiful picture and a very strong concept, mm -hmm. but if you take it into reality, it's sometimes confusing. And what we are saying in Applied Safe is that we take that solution intent into consideration, but we also have to think about it, what means that in reality. And in reality, we have a domain class, a model where we see, hey, these are all the entities which make up a solution intent, and they're all bound together. So here in the middle, we see a solution, and we have a red dash around it, and we see that the solution is made out of several systems, and a system can be consisting out of several other systems so this is the composite pattern which we are using here as well and every time when we look at the solution we have already a lot of things implemented and there are a lot of things which we are about to implement a future solution and this in between thing is something that is transactional and this is bound with a solution increment and now in a solution increment we are talking about hey, how do you control that? What do you have to document? What do you have to update? And this is declared in a solution increment definition of done. So there are not only definition of done for stories, features, and so forth, but also for increments. And here's a solution increment. And of course, just to make the picture full, we have also the solution intent, which is constraining the future solution. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, I was going to ask you how that related to definition of done. It's super important to talk about definition of done. And everybody knows the concept uh, of definition of done. You know, uh, there is this joke, definitions of done, um, that we tripled the story points per sprint because most of the stories are almost done. And this is equal to technical depth. And of course, if we want to have solutions which are deployable to the customers at every iteration, we can't work with technical depth. So that's why we need this definition of done. And if you look at definition of done, we have also some definition of done in um, in uh, defined in our applied safe. And we see here an example 
of um, stories, of design review, of features. And for a feature, we could say in a definition of done well, it needs to pass all acceptance tests. Uh, there's a customer sign off, there's a quality audit, there's a safety review. And for stories, we have peer reviews, we have automated tests and so forth. And this is all defined. And this is done on a per feature phase. Mm -hmm. Per story, we do this definition of done, and we uh, they all have to comply with this definition of done. Now, if you taking that into a further approach, we have to look at the various iterations. So we have team increments, we have system increments, we have solution increments, we have release solution, and all of them have different definition of done. So you have a definition of done for a team increment. So probably we'll say we need to have the detailed design in place, we need to have a code review, we need to have static code checks, um, for a system increment, it says, well, here we need the technical safety requirements, the technical safety concept, uh, system test integration test report, and so forth. For a solution increment, it could be a solution architecture, solution test report, and so forth. And if we do it on a release base, so we need to have a safety validation specification and a validation report. Oh, that's excellent. I'm always interested in how the agile approach, solution intent, definition of done relates to functional safety and in particular the agile safety cases. So what you've just highlighted are all the elements that builds that safety case, which is really excellent. Yep. Well, depending on the attributes of a solution, it might be necessary to extend the definition of done and adapt to existing documentation as part of building this safety case. I just wondered, maybe we could explore that a little bit further. Could you talk a little bit about what happens to existing long lasting solutions? Yeah, yeah, okay, of course. And um, we, we talk about solution intent and we said we will build it incrementally. So we see that, um, a complete big upfront documentation is not practical or not enforceable. And especially if we don't know what the product will be, we cannot write the requirements upfront. So we find it out on our way for the product. So what we usually can imagine is that we have like kind of a skeleton. We have a, like an empty template and every increment, we write a little bit more into that document. And so we start with a useful patchwork documentation and there is a skeleton as a base. And step-by-step step, we are following it into a natural evaluation of that solution. And of course, to make that happen, we need to have guidelines. How is the branching and merging done? Um, what is their acceptance criteria um, for things which are not filled out? And how do we do the tracing back to the right things into the skeleton? So we need to make sure what is flexible, what is not so flexible. We must support for the variations. Huh? So not all the content must be available in advance. And what we have seen so far is that an agile approach is best to comply with. And if we talk about some long lasting solutions, which you asked for is um, we have some clients, they have products where the expected lifetime is, for example, 26 years old. So you have to imagine that when these things are built or designed, the engineers who will maintain it in the future, they're in the kindergarten right now. So if you have several hundred people like in safe working on a solution and you would have all the documentation just in stories and features, there would be 100,000 stories probably, and all one sentence as a user, I want to so that I can. So this is not helpful for understanding a system. They could be contradicting. And what a lot of companies are doing in this case is that they are differentiating between the transient objects. That is just something that is um, the reason for doing something, for changing something. And this could be features and stories and say, every time we implement such a transient object, we 
um, we update the solution object which makes up the solution. Like there's only one code, there's one documentation, there's one test code. This is all changed with every story and with every feature. And some companies differentiate between these transient objects and these solution objects. And it's an approach which is also supported by Applied Safe. Oh, this is really excellent. As you know, this whole area is really exciting to me. I spent a lot of years at General Motors in the functional safety area. So understanding how we're evolving and building safety cases in a more incremental way now, um, I find really, really interesting. And I guess with that, I wondered if there's any last comments as we close out this particular compliance series uh, session. Yeah, thank you so much. And um, sometimes it can be overwhelming if you talk about agile development in large scale, long, long lasting solutions with regulatory requirements. But there are proven patterns and methods to use and you can achieve both. You can achieve agility, business agility and full compliance, even in functional safety. And if you want to hear more, just get in contact with us, Sheila from Petco or Peter at Petco.eu. Thanks and have a nice day. Well, thanks so much, Peter. Thank you.